Now John looks up into heaven and is revealed about the 144,000. Now the 144,000 is original tribes of Judah. Yes. But wait a minute. Now she had a Jehovah Witness background. Mm -hmm. They couldn't give her clarity on this answer. They were saying only 144,000 going to be saved. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's any Jehovah Witnesses watching, mm -hmm. you need clarity. Listen and go to your King James Bible. Listen, don't go to that New World Translated yes. Bible. Hallelujah. Go to the King James Bible and get a perfect understanding. The 144,000 represent the 12 tribes of Israel. But John said, Lo, I looked and saw a multitude. In other words, he saw another number. Yes. Read verse 9 again. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne. Now, wait a minute. I want y'all to see that last part. Stood before the throne. And before the Lamb. And before the Lamb. Clothed with white robes. Clothed with what? Bishop, hallelujah. Clothed with white robes. Now they stood before the judgment of God yes. with white robes. Yes. Meant they were cleansed yes. or purified. Yes. They were a holy people. Yes. How many? A multitude couldn't nobody count. Yes. So you take the 144,000 with a multitude that washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, and you got the salvation plan of God, and you got the same people of God in the eternal kingdom. Hallelujah. Now, that, now Jehovah Witness, the more than 144,000 is going to glory. Amen. If you know how to rightly divide the scripture. And since your teachers don't know how to rightly divide, you need to leave away from that mess. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you can't find no church in the area you at, don't go to church. Amen. Watch me by way of internet. Amen. And I'll give you the clarity of the scripture that you can transcend yourself from foolishness and from ignorance into the true kingdom of heaven that you might have a resting place for your soul one day. This thing is serious. This thing is real. It's time out for playing games. Hallelujah. We got to understand something. God's word has mis been misquoted and mistranslated and abused and praise God. And when the Lord finds it, you pray and you ask God to show you someone who could teach you the truth. Now someone is listening other than this daughter. Yes. God has sent you a messenger from heaven yeah. if you have the humility to accept correct guidance. Yeah. Amen. So we see here, yes, there was 144,000, but John said, I saw another number. Yes. A multitude yeah. which no, no man could count. No man. Yeah. Of, of all what? Ethnic groups, yeah. tongues, yeah. all type of people. Yeah. Amen. And they had washed their robes and made them white yeah. before the Lamb. Now this is before the judgment throne. In other words, they are saved. Yeah. They have accepted the salvation plan and they have washed their robe. They have lived a holy life. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Who are these dressed in white robes? Hallelujah. And whence cometh they? Yeah. They come out of great trials and tribulation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. More I watch over the internet, I see more churches emulating true yeah. life. Yeah. They got now white head covers right. and a white robe. Amen. I was amazed. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But they're not teaching all the Amen. truth. Amen. But I'm going to straighten it out. I'm going to straighten it out. Amen. 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 Meaning of Hebrews 10, verse 26. The meaning of Hebrews 10, 26. Amen. Since we are all imperfect, even after baptism, if we stumble and make mistakes, does this mean we cannot be forgiven? Or is this scripture simply stating that if we intentionally sin after baptism, then our sins cannot be forgiven? Now, that's, that's a real good question. Amen. Now, first of all, you've got to understand Hebrews 10, 26. What God is doing here. I hope everyone pays close attention. Amen. You don't get this kind of teaching Amen. in a Baptist church. Hallelujah. God is protecting his divine word so that those people who misinterpret grace can say, I can live like I want to live because of God's grace. No, God gives an instruction here in Hebrews 10, 26, if we willfully sin, after we have come to the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. Now, God in his mercy, realized there were going to be some that would error and make a mistake. So we've got to first understand a willful sin. You're dealing with the Greek word hamatia, which in the concordance references over to 1 John 
I believe that's the fifth chapter. So let's turn to 1 John. I believe that's chapter 5. And let's pick up right in verse 16. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he, God, shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. A sin not unto death. Uh huh. There is a sin unto death. There is a sin unto death. So we're dealing with two types of sin. Yeah. The willful sin is a sin unto death. Many times we sin every day. Amen. But it's not a willful sin. Yeah. A willful sin is when you purposely, yeah. with foreknowledge, decide to commit a sin. Amen. You know it's a sin, but you do it anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. This is a willful sin. There's no more forgiveness for that sin. Now, watch close now. In James, the fifth chapter, mm -hmm. if you commit a willful sin, yes. God has made even arrangements for that. Yes. See the mercy of God. Yes. Yes. Ain't you a merciful God? Yes. 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 All right, in James, right from verse 14, fifth chapter, verse 14. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. And Is any Lord. sick among you, let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Call for the what? The elders of the church. Amen. So this, everybody just can't do this. It has to be a spiritual leader in the church or who the spiritual leader designates. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Verse 16. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Finish that. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick. The prayer of the faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And if he have committed sins, Amen. they shall be forgiven him. Yeah. Now this talks about a sin unto death or a willful sin. Right. Obviously, it's not talking about the sins that we do every day. Because it wouldn't tell you to call for the elders of the church and not with all. Now it's talking about a sin where you have violated a statute of instruction God has given for the church. Yeah. Now in his mercy I said God allows for this passage of scripture to be there in case someone messes up in a big time way. Right. In case someone commits uh, fornication. In case someone, amen, uh, goes against the oracles of God yeah. concerning a statute. In case somebody commits abortion, amen, which is nothing but premeditated murder. Right. You, know, you know, it amazes me. It amazes me how there can be a debate among political factions to which congressmen and senators concerning abortion. Well, how is there any debate? How, how can a woman have the choice to commit a premeditated murder? Now, premeditated means you plan it. There is no forgiveness or rather, the maximum penalty in this dispensation of time for a premeditated murder is life imprisonment. And if you're in a state where they have the death penalty, Amen. that means you you get the death penalty, the capital Hallelujah. punishment. In other words, they execute you. Hallelujah. Now, I'm saying, abortion is premeditated because you got to plan it. Mm -hmm. And any time you go to a doctor who performs the abortion, he's a co-conspirator. Both of them ought to be in prison for the rest of their life. Amen. Or either executed. Amen. 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 Now, suppose that a person has been caught up in that lifestyle before they were saved. Mm -hmm. Is any sick among you? Call for the elders of the church. Now it's talking about spiritual sickness mm -hmm. and physical sickness. Amen. Let them annoy with all in the name of the Lord. Not in the preacher's name, in the Lord's name. Amen. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and if they have committed sins, they shall be. Yes, not might be. Yes. Not almost be. They shall be forgiven them. Yes. Now I want to get to this. There is a ministry on, and they teach similar to what we teach. Similar. But they're misguided in women ministry, yes. and Amen. also misguided in Divorce and remarriage. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. God said there is no uh, legality for a man divorcing his wife right. except for fornication. Mm -hmm. Now, what if the man divorced three women and got married three times and then decided to get saved? Mm -hmm. Does the man have to leave the wife he's with now?